to normal welcome to the ryan mack show on cities 92.9 the news and talk of bloomington normal today i want to discuss something completely out of the range of what i usually do uh it's no offense to the news goers out there but with all the craziness going on sometimes it's nice to take a break from the the world around us and get into some different topics at hand now, as I was going through prep work and notes for tonight, I came across an article uh, that kind of kind of relates to what I wanted to get into, and it's actually a pretty good um, starter for here we are. Uh, text in 309-451-9299. Be a part of the show today. We're going to talk about uh, a couple of uh, things at hand, faith and questioning God. Now you might think to yourself, that's kind of a broad basis for discussion, but there's a lot to get into with, with these two topics at hand. So let's dig in. All right. So a school district in Utah may be banning the Holy Bible after a parent complained that it contained inappropriate and pornographic material forced it to face community review. So it's going to go through community review. Uh, This back on December 11th, the David School District received a petition from a parent to have the Bible removed from schools for being what the parent considered a sex-ridden book. The petition of the parent request to review the Bible was made available on Tuesday with the parent's name and address withheld. Utah Parents United... Uh, I guess it's a progressive group, uh, left off one of the most sex-ridden books around, the Bible. You'll no doubt find that the Bible has no serious values for minors because of its pornographic by our new definition, the petition read. I can't think of anything more uh, unserious in my life. Uh, Apparently, since the school district is banning books that is deemed sensitive material, this woman, this parent, thinks that the Bible should be uh, banned because it's sensitive and, and pornographic in nature. That is the furthest thing from the truth. But it goes on. Uh, this complaint follows the passage of Utah's sensitive materials in schools law enacted in May, which prohibits certain sensitive instruction materials if they contain explicit sexual arousal, stimulation, masturbation, intercourse, sodomy, or fondling. Within the first five months of the law being in place, parents filed over 250 complaints petitioning for certain books to be removed. According to this parent's petition, the Bible falls under this description and deserved to be removed. Hmm. Uh, Incest, bestiality, prostitution, genital mutilation, fellatial, dildos, rape, and even infanticide, the parent wrote, you'll no doubt find that the Bible under Utah Code 7, 76, 10, 12, 27 has no serious values for minors because it's pornographic by definition. I think that's a little bit of a stretch there. Yes, there are certain parts of the Bible that are graphic in nature, but it is in no way uh, in the same line of graphic material that your kids are getting in schools today. But the school calls this a process. Anyone who requests a book to be reviewed has to have standing. They don't just jump to conclusions, they said. We don't blow off one request because we think it's silly. This has been very time-consuming. We have 15 committees that have been established for this purpose. So it's an average of 60 days this committee takes, um, and they are facing currently a backlog of requests from other parents. So far, there have been 81 books reviewed by the district's committee. They have also removed 33 books while retaining about 30 after the review. Uh, so according to the district's website, then, the parent has required was required to present 49 pages of the Bible's text that could be used as evidence for inappropriate content. Of course, this parent is going to cherry-pick some of the graphic things in the Bible, but of course, that's not the Bible's intent 
to present you pornographic displays and graphic material. It is truth on those topics and what it's what it's learning and its and its lessons in it. It is by no way the pornographic nature that you see in magazines and you see in uh, the graphic novels that are being discussed, like the one recently at Hayworth uh, Junior High. That is a stark contrast to what the Bible is discussing. Uh, so this committee is made up of about seven people, including a district administrator, a licensed teacher, uh, and at least four parents who, who will vote on whether the Bible will remain in schools. Currently, this school also re- maintains a policy that religious tracts, books, or literature may not be sing- singled out for special regulation or prohibition based on content, but is subject to reasonable time and place and manner restrictions imposed by the schools. So, she's going off the rocker and, and calling the Bible porn and wants it out of the schools, and, and she's giving uh, a, basically an eight-page listing of offensive Bible passages, according to her, and quote, if the books that have been banned so far are any indication for way less offenses, this should be a slam dunk. Uh, I wasn't planning on leading with this story, but I thought it would be a good fit because it makes me question my faith in humanity as well as some of the things that we're talking about today. If you're just tuning in, this is the Rymax Show on Cities 92.9. Feel free to text in through 9451 We're diving through a topic that maybe not many of you have thought about, or maybe you have. Maybe you've had things happen in your life that you've questioned. Um, if, especially if you're a believer, you might ask yourself, why? Why does God allow things to happen? Why does he allow good things to happen? Why does he allow bad things and terrible, evil things to happen? And I think there's a greater understanding for that. There's suffering and hard times uh, do happen. And there is also a greater reward on the other end of those uh, suffered times. There's many examples in the Bible of those such occasions. Um, None other than Job, when God takes everything from him and he shows his, uh, his faith and his trust in God, He remains steadfast in those with God. And despite taking everything away from him, he still remains obedient to God. So when you question where your faith is, I think it's important to remember some of the examples in the Bible and that if they can be tested and still remain faithful, then anything surely in your life can also be tested. can also help you remain faithful as well. If you rely on God for everything you do, then you will have nothing but riches in the end. So that's where we're going with today. We're going to talk about faith and questioning of God in light of everything happening and going on. So I want to start off by getting into Job. Um, A few weeks ago, I read a devotional, and it was the basis on uh, challenging God and things, <laughs> terrible things happen when you challenge God, you, you're not going to get your way, but it's important. And I'll just leave it with this. Anytime you question God's wisdom or step over his boundaries, you're telling yourself that you are smarter than God that hits you right in the face. There's too many times in our life that we think that we know what's best and that we know our own path and we think that we are in control of our own lives and then all that changes in a heartbeat and makes us realize that wow I'm really not in control at all and it it helps put things in perspective now this is a key lesson because Job is tested here uh, this is really one of those situations where it kind of puts you in your place. So as God speaks to Job, he's, he's drawing the creator-creature line of distinction in very bold uh, words as you read through. This is uh, Job 31, 38.1 through 42.6. So just a snippets here. Then the Lord answered Job 
out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dresses for action like a man. I will question you, and you made it known to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have an understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut the sea with doors when it burst from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swallowing band, and prescribed limits for it, and set doors and bars, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no further, and here shall your proud waves be strayed. And that was just from 38, 1 through 11. So, and if you want to continue reading on, you can. Uh, I'm going to break it down a little bit in a minute too, but let that sink in to what those verses are talking about. God pushes back against Job and he's challenging him. Uh, Let your soul rest in this. Now let's remember how small we are and how fragile and frail we are compared to God. The more we embrace the utterly laughable irrationality of ever thinking that in any situation, location, relationship, would it ever be possible for you to be smarter than God? Just laugh at that for a minute. It's kind of funny if you think about it. After you've kind of let that sink in, serve this one up. He is awesome. He refuses to question, refuse to question his will. If we just refuse to question his will, things will get better in the end. You need to be thankful and remember that he is graceful and that his wisdom alone can change your direction. Now that got all that from from just thinking off the cuff. But he challenges Job this entire book on um, a lot of things. So it's important to remember that the more we challenge God, the less we're going to get, and we're going to get his wrath in return. All right, so switching gears. If you're turning in, this is the Ryan Max Show, and Cities 92.9. 309-451-929 and is the text line. We're talking all things faith and questioning God today. Not a good idea when you do so. Uh, next, I want to get into more about that faith in just a few after the break. Stay tuned. This is the Ryan Max Show on Cities 92.9. Hello, welcome back to the Ryan Max Show on Cities 92.9, the news and talk of Bloomington Normal. 309-451-9299 is the text line. Be a part of the show today. Uh, I decided to go off the rails in another direction. There's a lot of stories going on, a lot of big big news stories. There's a lot of classified document stuff. There's Hunter Biden and Joe Biden's mess. Uh, there's a possible Trump indictment and arrests coming soon, although I don't see that coming because they have been trying to get after him for the last seven years, it seems like. Um, So I've gone a different direction. Um, An important time such as this going on right now in our our world, in our lifetime, faith and questioning God becomes the forefront. And if you're a believer, especially in moments like these, it makes you question, is this real life? Am I doing this? What am I doing? I I need help. And that's where God comes in. He's not always going to give you the answers that you seek in prayer. He's going to give you the answers you need. You know, we always pray. We pray for the finest things, and it doesn't always come out, so that's when we question even more. But we're praying the wrong way. We're praying with the wrong mindset. But it doesn't mean we stop praying. We continue to go to Him for all we need, um, even in, you know, when it doesn't seem convenient for us to do so, because by our his grand design, we are sitting here today. Um, I know I wouldn't be here 
with without him. Um, so thanks to him, especially in times of need. Uh, so we've been talking all things faith and, and questioning faith, when, especially when times are rough, right? I, I, you know, we all have been there. Horrible, horrible things have happened, and, and different things have happened to many of us. And makes us question our faith. I've been there many times in my adult life. Why am I doing this? What, is this the right way to do it? Am I doing this? I've gone down the wrong path so many times. I still feel like I do some days. Um, it's hard. It's hard walking that perfect narrow path. Um, but we don't have to. Our, our works aren't as are for a result of a reward. We don't have to do anything, quote unquote, righteous or good, Grace has been received through Christ so that we get to have that um, uh, redemption. We don't have to do go throughout our lives. Surely it helps to walk in that light. But we don't have to be perfect and we don't have to seek out doing good deeds in order to receive the things we want from God. We have that through Christ. Christ gave up himself so that we may be sin without sin. We are a broken world. We are a broken people. The more we turn to him in times of need, the more he'll respond. And it's important, especially in this lost world that we live in, uh, that we seek him because it seems like we've let that get in the way of some of our um, downfalls that have been happening, whether it be uh, worldly idols, uh, ideology, politics. We let things seep into our lives and control our lives that we forget the main purposes to why we're here and it's to glorify Him. So, where are you at in your faith walk? Are you A-OK? Are you great? Are you eh? Let me know. 309-451-9299. Text it in. I'd like to hear where you're at in your journey. Are you questioning God? Uh, I do some days. I'll admit that I do. Why am I doing this? Uh, not not today. We all have those moments. Um, but it's also important to note that when you hear waiting on God to do something, it doesn't mean you physically just wait on Him to do something. It's it's an active uh, thing you have to do, and it's important to distinguish. Waiting on God doesn't mean to sit around and hope. Waiting means believing He will do what He's promised and then acting with confidence. Waiting on God is not at all like the meaningless waiting you do at the dentist office. Think about it. If you spend all that time in the dentist office, you're over an hour, and you're sitting there way over appointment. You're thinking, what is going on? So you start you know, thumbing around the, the magazines, start getting into it, you realize you were about a half hour into good more, uh, good housekeeping and you've torn out the recipes in some of these other magazines. But waiting's, waiting on God is not like that. It's an active life base on confidence in his presence and his promises. It's not a passive existence. It's not, it's not haunted by doubt. Waiting on God is an internal torment that results in paralysis. So waiting on God is an internal rest that results in courageous action. That it's it's an action. It's not a well. Uh, hope 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 you can do this for me, God. I really hope you you can do that for me. No, it, it's an active. Waiting is our calling. Waiting is our blessing. Every one of God's children has been chosen to wait, because every one of us lives between the already and the not yet. Already, this world has been broken by sin, but not yet has it been made new again. Already, this world has been broken. Uh, Already, Jesus has come, but not yet has he returned to take him home forever. Already, Jesus reigns, but not yet has he made his final kingdom come. Already, sin has been defeated, but not yet been completely destroyed. Already the Holy Spirit has been given, but not yet have you been perfectly formed into the likeness of Jesus. 
Already God has given you his word, but not yet has it totally transformed your life. Already have you been given grace, but not yet has that grace finished its work. You see, we're all called to wait because we all live right in the middle of God's grand redemptive story. We wait for the final end of the work that God has begun in and for us. But we don't just wait. We wait and hope. And what does God what does that hope in God look like? It's a confident expectation of a guaranteed result. We wait believing what God has begun, he will complete. So we live with confidence and courage. We get up every morning and act upon what is to come. And because what is to come is sure, we know that our labor in God's name is never in vain. So we wait and act. We wait and work. We wait and fight. We wait and conquer. We wait and proclaim. We wait and run. We wait and worship. We wait and give. We wait and sacrifice. Waiting on God is an action based on confident assurance of grace to come. That is that's powerful stuff. Hey, it's been the Ryan Max Show. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll see you next week. Hey, welcome back to the Ryan Max Show on Cities 92.9, the news and talk of Bloomington Normal. 309-451-9299 is the text number. You can text in, be a part of the show today. Um, all things faith and questioning and challenging God. That's what we're talking about today. I know earlier I discussed um, what it means to remain faithful in times of hardship, in times of richness, um, when things are going well. It's important to give praise and give thanks when when things are obviously going wrong and you need him to save you and help you, uh, obviously, to do so. Um, but there are also many instances in the Bible many stories in which faith proves to be the answer. Faith in God alone proves to be the answer. It's a walk that we we all do poorly. And I, I'm the first one to admit that there are days where I'm doing really well, and there are days I'm like, man, what is going on? Why can't I do this? Why can't I get through this? Um, you pray. You ask for his wisdom and guidance. If you're married, you communicate with your spouse and pray together. Those are the things that help you get through those hard times. And in those great times, you give thanks um, to him for giving you those good times. Because as much free will as we have, there are a lot of things in everybody's life uh, that is by God's grand design. And all of it is by his design. But in those moments of clarity where we see great things happen that we didn't expect, that was an especial uh, wink moment there. All right, so where are the examples of faith? It, you know, you're, you're questioning your faith. You question, how can I believe in something I don't see or I don't seek answers? I'm not seeing anything, so why should I believe, right? Well, there are many instances in the Bible that also proves that faith exists and that God is is that proof that it does. Uh, Hebrews 11 displays a great uh, picture of what faith looks like and how faith moves the mountains that are in uh, some of these stories. It's by faith alone that shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in the days of old earned a good reputation. It's by faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. And what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man, and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his examples of faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. 
It's impossible to please God without faith. That's a powerful verse right there. It's impossible to please God without faith. Imagine how strong that is. Um, anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. That's one of my favorite stories. You have God telling Noah, hey, dude, um, build a boat. And Noah's like, why? Uh, Because I'm going to flood the earth uh, in about, you know, a few days, a few weeks or so. It's going to it's gonna rain in this exact time. Just, just you know, just do it. Just build me a boat uh, by myself. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to need you to build a boat by, by yourself and just, you know, trust me. So Noah's like, okay, whatever you say. And I'm sure there was days he, you know, he wanted to give up and it was too hard. It was by himself. But he persevered and pushed forward. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before before by his faith noah condemned the rest of the world and he received the righteousness that comes from faith it was also by faith that abraham obeyed god when when god called him to leave home and go to another land that god would give him as an inheritance he picked up and went and left everything and followed god And even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith. For he was like a foreigner living in tents. So did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child. Though she was barren and she was too old, she believed, that key word, believed that God would keep his promise. That's the biggest thing. You're not going to always see things, but that belief in God, that he, can, he will keep his promise, that is what he asks us to do. It's really some powerful stuff. Um, a whole nation came from this one man who was as good as dead. A nation with so many people that like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there is no way to count them. All these people died still believing that God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it from the distance and welcomed it. They agreed They were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for their country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. He has prepared a way for them. They remained faithful and kept going, knowing that he was going to keep his promise. Another section of faith. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. If you're just tuning in, this is the Ryan Mack Show in Cities 92.9. The news and talk of Bloomington Normal. We're talking all things faith and questioning God in, in light of the world that's in chaos today. And I've been posing questions on where you're at in your own faith. Um, and some examples in the Bible in which faith lends its hand as evidence that God is faithful to you if you are faithful to him. He will keep his promises if you keep that faith in check. It's hard to do today's world with everything falling apart around us. But 
it's important to to keep that especially with you ha- when you have uh politicians uh an ideology of a group of very powerful leaders and people putting in place policies that are antithetical to God's design it was by faith that Joseph when he was about to die, said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt. Another example of faith. He even commanded them to take his bones with them when they left. It was also by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given him an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to, to, to own treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept his eye on the one who is invisible. It was then by faith again that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorsteps so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. It was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground, but when the Egyptians tried to follow, they were drowned. It was by faith the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days and the walls came crashing down. It was by faith that Rahab, the prostitute, was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friend welcome to the spies. So how much more do you need? It would would be taken forever to see the examples, the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, These people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, they quenched the flames of fire, they escaped the death of the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to fight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. That, my friends, is powerful stuff. Faith leads you to the greatest of rewards. We must remain faithful in our in our step with God. Especially in times of despair and disparaging news, the suffering has become a very important tool in God's design. Though we suffer now, greatness is on the horizon. Sometimes you have to suffer the most, as did Job, in order to overcome and have your faith tested. It it is really awesome to see some of those examples play out. Hey, don't go away. This is the Ryan Mack Show on Cities 92.9. Welcome back to the Ryan Mack Show on Cities 92.9, the news and talk of Bloomington Normal, 309-451-9299. That's 309-451-9299 is the text line. Text in today. Be a part of the show. I'm always grateful to to have you guys text in. Uh, Some of you have (laughs) violently disagreed with over the last few weeks of topics that I brought up. Uh, That's okay, too. So if you disagree, then feel free to let me know. However, if you have thoughts on today, let me know as well. Uh, I'm talking all things faith and questioning God and and the fact that God challenges us and pushes us back in our faith as well. Uh, So I started off just kind of in a whirlwind of um, a a topic offhand. I had the the Bible banning in the school and then got into Job and, and his challenges with God pushing back on him. But we all have things in our life that make us question um, our faith, right? Things that happen to us negatively over and over again that make us question, what, why am I doing this? Why do I keep believing in this? Nothing's really working out for me. But it's important to realize, you, to continue to have faith in the fact that 
God knows your heart and knows your plan better than you do. And I know sometimes things doesn't seem that way when things are snowballing out of control. Um, but God really is in control, and if we remember that, we'll be better off. So I know sometimes with lack of faith, it can be hard to, to stay focused um, and keep that faith. But God, God also questions us. And every time we question him and challenge him, he questions us back. Why spend money on what's not bread and labor for what doesn't satisfy? That's what God's questioning us. And too many of us do that today. It's another one of these things that we all tend to do. We all look for life in all the wrong places. We all tend to look for life horizontally. When the reality is that we should be looking vertically. Some way, we all tend to look to the created world to give us life. This world is full of all kinds of deceit, all kinds of lies, and we work, we look to so many things in this world to give us what we need, and, we're, and we forget that it comes from God. God is everything we need. We all carry around with us a personal I don't know, catalog, library, briefcase, satchel of if onlys, right? If only I was married, then I'd be happy. If only I could snag that job, I'd be satisfied. If only I could buy that one house, I don't think I'd want anything else. If only my marriage was better, then I'd be okay. If only my children would turn out right, then I'd be more content. If only I could achieve blank, I wouldn't want any more. If only our finances were more stable, then I wouldn't complain anymore. Whatever sits on the other side of your if only is where you're looking for life, peace, joy, hope, and the contentment of your heart. The problem with that is, while you continue to spend money on things that won't fill you and to work too hard to what won't satisfy you, it's a big disastrous spiritual mess that leaves you fat, addicted, in debt, and still unsatisfied as a whole. Why is that? Well, it's because earth will never be your savior. This physical created world with all of its sights, sounds, locations, experiences, relationships, it has no capacity to make your heart content. This world was designed by God to be one big finger that points you in the only place where your heart will find satisfaction and rest. Your heart rests only when it finds its rest in God and God alone. Jesus says, that, Jesus says this, Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourself with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. That's Luke 12, 33. I ask the question, what will hook your heart today in the hope that it will give you life? Where will you look for peace and rest of heart? What will you reach for to give you hope, courage, and a reason to continue? What is that? Where are you going to look in creation in order to try to find what only the Creator can give you? What bread will you purchase today that will never fill your spiritual stomach? Why would you frantically look around to creation to give you what you already have been given in Christ? That's a, a, a great question that I often think about. Why would you ask this broken world to be your Savior when Jesus has come as your Savior to supply in His grace everything that you need? If you think a lot about more about this, Isaiah 55 paints a better picture for these ifs and onlys. I think it's important to make that distinction because we all do. We all tend to covet 
We all covet our neighbor stuff. We want that big house. We want that shiny new vehicle. We want those 10 cats to start a cafe. We want, want, want. And and for what? The temporary satisfaction that it brings us? Th- that's really what it is. It's a temporary satisfaction because the greater satisfaction comes when we put all of our hope, all of our faith, and all of our desires in God. So in light of the faith struggles going on, you know, we got war-torn countries, we've got um, famine, we've got shortages of food, we've got countries looking to nuke each other. I mean, it's chaos everywhere you look. You've got an ideology creeping up all around us in the military, the schools. Society is, is on the verge of collapse financially, what are you putting your hope in? Where is your eggs going to be? Are they going to be the next best thing on this planet? I would hope not. That's a question for all of us that we need to answer. When, <laughs> when it hits the fan, who are you going to go to? God or the government? That's really should be the easiest answer. And if you're struggling with that one, maybe you need to check yourself. I do a lot of days. I do a lot of soul searching a lot of days. My wife will tell you that. Um, but I struggled coming up with an episode this week that related to all of us more on a one-on-one level. And I think that I came up with the best I could is that the struggle to help our faith stay strong in the midst of everything going on. And it's important that we do so even when we think we can't. Um, And it really hits home when everything starts collapsing because we don't need God when everything's good, right? We we fall back on, oh yeah, life is great. I got a million (laughs) dollars. I I don't need him. You only need God when you're suffering. We all tend to do it. We all need God when we're suffering only. And the thing is, he's still there whether you're suffering or you're in richness. It's important to praise him even when things are good, just as well as look to him when things are off the ship and sinking. It's really important to distinguish that. And we, I think we as a nation, if we could just get back to some of the fundamentals that our founding fathers gave us, they, they built this country on two things, faith and family. And they, this whole idea of separation, church, and state that the left portrays is, is BS at the, at, the, at the most because the idea of separation, church, and state wasn't so that you can't talk about God in schools, that what you couldn't ban the Bible in public places it was that the, the state, the government, couldn't establish its own religion. That was the separation of church and state. There's this misconstrued notion, notion that the separation of church and state means you can't talk about Jesus or God in public or, or the government. That's the furthest thing from the truth. A lot of our government buildings around the country in the state capitals and our federal capital have enshrined in their halls biblical scriptures our money, our money, our currency that we use is inscribed in God we trust. So for those who say that it, God doesn't matter, or God doesn't exist, or God's dead, or he, it's a small g, or we should keep God out of schools, God out of the government, look around you in the things we put our, our eyes on in the government. It's there. Our founders were religious people. They wanted a religious free country, but they wanted it because the King of England established a state religion. If you're just tuning in, this is the Ryan Mack Show on Cities 92.9, the news and talk of Bloom is Normal. We are just going off the rocker today. I wanted to get out of the news cycle, out of the big stories. I know there's an elephant in the room this week going on with the uh, the Trump circus, um, and will he or will he not be indicted but I wanted to get off 
um, on something else that I think hits home for all of us, and that it's our faith at times and our questioning um, of God and whether or not He really does move mountains for us, especially in times and when we don't think He's able to. He's moving them. We just can't see it. Um, so I started out going with Job and his challenges, and I, I talked. I'm talking a little bit about our own challenges with my own challenges of faith, and I know you you all have your own faith challenges. So text in three zero nine four five one nine two nine nine is the text line. Feel free to let me know where do you struggle with your faith. Did something happen to you in your life? that caused you to struggle in your own faith walk today. I, I'm going to be honest, I stumble every day, and maybe not as many as the stairs that Joe Biden climbs up in Air Force One, but it's it's a struggle. I'll be the first one to tell you it's a struggle every day. I question a lot of things why happen, but here's the thing. God allows free will. The commandments that he gave us, those are commandments to follow. But the opposite of that is free will. Murder is a choice. Sin is a choice. Following God is a choice. He wants you to follow him. But he also knows it's a personal choice. You either follow him or you you break into a world of sin. And that's really the fork in the road where we have to get to decide. You don't always you're not going to be perfect. But are you going to walk with him on that narrow road or are you going to stay on the side of the worldview. Hey, stick around. This is the Ryan Max show in cities, 92.9.